Welcome back to Tada 3D Printing. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I have the Prusa XL printer. This is the five tool head and I purchased it fully assembled. I have been having a lot of issues getting this to print how I wanted it to. Um, I've really been struggling with a lot of different things, but the main one has been the stringing and I've tried some different things that did not work and then I've also tried some things that did work. So I wanted to make this video so that you can see some of the things that worked for me. It may depend on the type of prints that you're printing. You may see the same results, but um, a lot of the things that I tried that didn't work were things that did work for other people. So I really wanted to encourage you that if you're struggling as I was with the stringing, to keep trying out some other things. And I wanted to give you some ideas of those things that you can try. So let's get into it. Number one is to use the most recent Prusa slicer. So as of today, the 2.7.1 is the most recent. It was released on December 13th and we'll see when the next one comes out. Of course, you want to download it for Windows or Mac, whichever you're using. Since I received the printer in the end of October, there have been six updates to Prusa Slicer. Um, they seem to be happening every couple weeks or so. This one here between the 23rd and the 22nd was one day, and then we had another one on the 16th. So they were kind of rapidly coming out there for a while, and I had troubles keeping up with them, but I do have the most recent as of today and I think I'm going to stick with that one because that one is the stable version for now. Number two is the most recent firmware. The current firmware for the Prusa XL as of filming this was 5.1.2. It was released on December 15th. In the approximate two months that I have had this Prusa XL multi-tool head, there have been five firmware releases for just the XL, so and they were not the same day as the Prusa Slicer releases. So between the five of this and the six of the Prusa Slicer, there have been 11 updates in the last two months. So it was a little tricky to keep up with them, and also I was having some issues when I would update one and the other one hadn't come out yet. So, or maybe I just forgot to update the other one. So really have to make sure that you're up to date on both of these together. And I am going to, from here on out, only going to be updating stable versions of both of these. You can see what version you're running under settings, under version info. Number three is to check the nozzle seals. This was recommended to me by Prusa, and they do have their own YouTube video on how to do this to see when the nozzle seals are too high and gonna be pushing your nozzle up, or when the nozzle seals are too low and they're not hitting at all, so they're not doing their job. I'll link the video in the description, but this is what we're looking for. They need to seal without pushing anything up. And this is my machine. I do not feel like I need to adjust these. I feel like they all look good. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. Number four is to grease the coupler pins. This was also recommended to me by the Prusa chat after my retractions and other things did not seem to be working. This is pretty simple, but you do need to download and print another piece so that the grease can fit over the coupler pins. So if you click the little link in printables, it's going to take you to the Prusa XL printable parts. So you have to go down to the maintenance, parts for maintenance. And this first one here, the TC grease is the item that I needed to print for that. And I'm still running some other tests on my XL at the same time, so I'm going to run this on my MK4. So it's going to be the 0.4 nozzle. I do print it with the PETG, 15% infill, 0.2 structural, all that good stuff. So I've got that printed, and it turned out fine. I did use the Prusimit PETG, and it just had the one funny little string at the very end. This new part works well. It screws into the grease. Then I just take each tool head, clean these three pins on the front, and then go through and take the grease and go over, make sure to completely coat it out. And if there's anything left over, go back with a paper towel to wipe it. So I just make sure that everything is really greased. I figure I can just always clean up a little bit if I need to, and I do this with all five tool heads. And number five is to dry your filament. I really hesitated doing this because I was not having issues with filament on any other machine, even my single tool head, 
but obviously I still needed to try something else. And you guys had said in the comments that everybody seemed to think that I needed to dry my filament. So I run this through the bamboo. There's a way to do that. And I do that with two different colors, black and white. And then I go through and run my benchies again. So this is the black and white benchy that I ran, 0.6, just stock nozzle. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It's very stringy. There's some kind of blurbs or blobs that got pulled off that you can see on the inside, and it's just not great. But this one on the right is with dried filament. So you can see automatically that there is a little bit of stringing still, but it's way better. I mean, this hasn't been brushed or touched up at all. The stringing is hugely different in my opinion and those blobs and things that got pulled in you don't see those it looks so much cleaner and yes it is a 0.6 nozzle so the detail is not perfect but this is such a huge improvement so I wanted to test out printing another black and white design and this is a room box that the customer wanted black on the outside and white on the inside Rather than doing two separate prints, I just did it all in one, but I didn't have enough of the white for this print, so I ran both of them black and white without being dried. These were just regular filaments that I've used before. In fact, they were the ones that were spotty on the benchy, and I think they turned out really, really good. There is one little spot here where I see a little bit of white, which is fine because that's going to be on the base. So I think my rule of thumb from here on out is going to be if it's a large print, then it's not as needed to dry the filament, but if it's small or super detailed, then I have to dry the filament. And I am hoping that this does work out because I do not want to have to dry every single filament. It takes about 12 hours in the bamboo, and to try to keep that separate is going to be really tricky. Now for the things that did not work for me. The first one was changing the temperature. This was the first thing that Purusha Chat recommended to me on an earlier version of the slicer and firmware. And I went down a rabbit hole of temperature towers and trying different temperatures. And I was able to get things to improve, but I had to run it at such a low temperature, 190, in order to get it to not string like crazy. That seemed to be the fix. But then I started having issues with under extrusion. Not only was there issues on my layer change here, but all of this side here had just, it was messy and looked terrible. And later I found out from Prusha Chat that was because it was too cold. It was running too low. I was under extruding, especially when I was printing multiples like this because the prints were cooling off a little bit in between as it was jumping around to the different multiples of it. And so that is why I was having other issues that were popping up. The next thing that did not work for me was changing the retractions. Prusha Chat gave me some very specific things to change and I did implement those changes and things actually got worse on my printer. I went back to Prusha Chat and they decided to go a completely different direction. So I didn't delve into this too much, but the retractions did not help with me. And the third thing that did not work for me, I think will be very interesting to a lot of people because this has been the fix everybody seems to find, the nozzle change. Doing a 0.4 nozzle as opposed to a 0.6 nozzle did not work for me. I showed this a little bit on a previous video, but I actually went back through and used the dried filament to make sure that I was, you know, giving this the best shot possible. On the left is the 0.6 nozzle with the dried filament, and on the right is the 0.4 nozzle with the dried filament. So it's still very stringy. It's a little bit messy here on the corner of the window on the front. And there is still a little bit of streaking on this door. So I really feel like the 0.6 nozzle worked much better than the 0.4. So those are some of the things that did and did not help improve the stringing on my Prusa XL. I do hope that going forward, Prusa makes some changes on the XLs that they ship out. You know, we have these pre-sliced G codes as test files so that we can see if we put the printer together, if everything is working correctly. And when those test prints are not acceptable, it's really hard to know where to go from there. And that's why I've spent so much time on the stringing because just my test prints were not acceptable. I wasn't happy with them. So whatever changes need to happen, whether it is the 0.4 nozzle, if that's what Prusa decides needs to be, 
or if they just need to update the firmware on this so that it's actually the current thing that goes out. But our test prints should look good so that we can go from there, whether we wanna change materials, whatever it is, we need to have acceptable test prints. I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from getting this printer, ordering it, finishing your pre-order, because there are so many different people that have had different experiences. And it also, I think, depends a lot on what types of prints you're printing. So I don't want to discourage anybody, but I also feel like it's not okay that there are such a variety of responses because we really should have a reliable printer that we've waited this long for. So I really wanna hear your comments if you received a Prusa XL, if you had any issues with stringing or any other issues, and if so, what helped you? Thanks for watching.